You know, I'm so thankful to just be walking through the gospel of Mark with you. And I, I pray and I hope uh, that, that so far it's been a great blessing to you as it has been a great blessing to me. Um, one thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to skip over verse 40 through verse 45 of chapter 1. And it's not because it's not important. It's, it's, it's very much important. We see that Jesus has, has the power over a, a serious skin disease, a deformity known as leprosy. But the reason that I'm going to skip over that small section is I've already done a podcast on that back a few months ago. And so just, just uh, to, to avoid you know, just kind of going over the same things again. I'm just going to kind of skip over it and run into chapter two tomorrow. But before, but before we go to chapter two, there's one more thing that I want to show you in chapter one. Um, I, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had just an extremely busy day? I, I mean, just one of those days you wake up in the morning and you kind of have your day planned. You know that uh, I, I'm going to do this this afternoon and then Tonight I'm going to do this, and and you just kind of you know you just kind of have it planned out. But then you know the phone starts ringing, things start happening, and before long you're being pulled and tugged in various directions. And then you get to the end of the day, and you turn around, and you're so wore out uh, that you that you never got a chance to fulfill what you wanted to fulfill and do what you wanted to do because so many things were happening in your life, and it's just a busy tiresome, wearisome day. Have you ever had one of those days? Well, friends, when we think about the Lord Jesus Christ, as I've told you many times, especially over the last few days in this walkthrough of Mark, Jesus was not only 100% God, but he was also 100% man. And in his humanity, Jesus also grew weary and Jesus also grew tired and Jesus was also pulled in many different directions. Now what I want to do today is I just want to show you uh, this one day in the life of Jesus. Now this is something that maybe uh, you wouldn't pick up on if, if you didn't just really look at it closely, but I, I want you to go back with me to Mark chapter 1, and I want you to see verse number 16. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. So in verse 16 through 20, this is where Jesus is going to call Simon and Andrew and James and John to come and be to follow him and be fishers of men. You see verse 16, it says, As he was passing along by the Sea of Galilee, so, so here we have that, that one sentence that kind of lets us know where Jesus is at. So, so just imagine right here that the sun is coming up. This is early in the morning. Jesus passing along the Sea of Galilee. Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Uh, it, it, it tells us that James and John were mending their nets. This kind of lets us know they had come in from a night of fishing. They're cleaning their nets. And this is the moment that Jesus shows up and says, follow me. So early in the morning, Jesus passing by the Sea of Galilee calls them to follow him. Now, now, now look at verse number 21. After that scene happens, the Bible says, then they went into Capernaum and right away, he entered a synagogue on the Sabbath and began to teach. So he leaves the shores of Galilee and he walks up into the hill country there, into Capernaum, and immediately, right away, he goes into the synagogue where they're having a service. And when he gets into the synagogue, you and I, we know the story, the Bible says, that he began to teach. And so he calls the first four disciples, immediately goes to the synagogue and begins to teach. And while he is in there teaching, what happens? The demon-possessed man rises up, the demon shows himself, manifests, and begins to hurl insults at Jesus. And then Jesus does what? He cast the demon out. Okay, And then the Bible tells us uh, that, that just after that, verse 29, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went to Simon's house 
and what? It's there that Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. So, so just imagine the day already. He calls the disciples. He goes to the synagogue. He teaches. He casts out a demon. Now, as soon as that's over, he goes straight to Peter's house. And what? His mother-in-law, Peter's mother-in-law, is there sick in the bed. And Jesus heals her of the fever. And she begins to serve them. Then look at the next line, verse 32. When evening came, after the sun had set. So, so, so that same day, the sun is now going down. And as the sun is going down, what happens? They begin to bring to Jesus all who were sick, all who were demon-possessed. They're all assembled at the door. And Jesus begins to heal the various diseases and to drive out the demons. Just think of this long day in the life and the ministry of Jesus. I mean, every time that he maybe thought he's going to get a little bit of a break, somebody else was coming to him with some need, and Jesus was meeting those needs, and he was being pulled in a thousand different directions. So, so what do we expect to see next? I mean, if it's you and me, we get to the end of that day, and what do we do? We pass out. We crash. We go to sleep. I was just telling my little girl June this morning of a time back when I was a, a little boy that I can remember one spring break, my cousin Jonathan and I, he and I were just, we lived three miles apart and, and I was about 12 or 13 and this was a day you could ride your bikes and, and be okay and, and Jonathan and I, I remember that, that, that spring break, he and I were just back and forth burning up the road between each other's house on our bicycles. Back and forth we'd go and we would make that trip three and four times a day just back and forth and I can remember getting to that Sunday evening uh, just the day before I was to go back to school and I remember walking upstairs after that busy week sitting on my bed at 6 p.m. And when I opened my eyes, it was 6 a.m. the next day because I had slept for 12 solid hours. My body was just worn out. And what do we expect Jesus to do? We expect Jesus to lay down, go to sleep, take a rest. Well, look what the Bible says, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up, went out, and made his way to a deserted place, and he was praying there. What does Jesus do at the end of that busy day? Well, he set aside time very early in the morning while it was still dark the next day to get up early and to spend time with his heavenly Father. Jesus was spending time in prayer. Friends, listen to what I'm about to say to you. Don't, don't ever feed and feed and feed so much that you forget to be fed yourselves. Don't, don't ever give and give and give so much that you don't take time to receive what God has for you. You make sure every single day that you are spending time with the Lord. You make sure that every day you are setting aside, aside time to, to just allow God to just, to just reach down and just impart His grace and His wisdom and His knowledge and His Word into your heart and into your life. Friends, it is vitally important. How do we know it's important? Because it was important for Jesus. And if it's important for Jesus, the Son of God, to get up early in the morning and pray, to make sure that when he wakes up in the morning, he's putting on his spiritual armor and getting ready to go out into the battle that faces him in the day ahead, friends, it is vitally important for you and me to do the same thing. You, you know, set aside time to get up, to pray, to seek the Lord's face, to allow Him to speak into your life. And I promise you, you will not regret it. You will wake up and your cup will run over and you will be ready to face whatever comes at you that day. That's a good lesson from Mark chapter number one. Guys, I look forward to getting into Mark two with you. I love you. God bless you. And I will see you next time on New Horizons.